Hello, this is the Blockade Pinball Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Freebus, a.k.a. Shut Your Trap. Joining me as always, halfway across the world, Jared Morgan. G'day, everyone. How goes it, Jared? It's been a while. It, is, it has been a little while between drinks, yes. Things are going okay. <laughs> uh. Yeah, yeah, you know, things kind of kind of get in the way, and most of it is my fault. But uh, I'm, I'm going to give everybody a hint why that is. But first, you can stare at Jared for a moment. Yeah, stare at me. Because, see, I've been uh, busy with, with work and things because I picked up a, a new job. Let's see if everybody can guess what it is. <laughs> <laughs> that was your blue steel right there, wasn't it? <laughs> hold, hold on, let's see if, it, let's see if I can do an, uh, a better impersonation of what it is I actually do. Click. <laughs> so uh but it's with a big camera yes it's, it's with a much bigger camera so yeah i've uh, i'm uh doing photography at the disneyland resorts and uh today actually was supposed to be my first official shift but i cheated and i took a uh, somebody else's day two days ago so i've got oh. one under my belt but uh a little later on this evening after the podcast i get to go into the park and go snappy snappy some pick picks so it's been going all right, hey? Like you, you were telling me that uh, people lining up to to get their photos done with you, <laughs> dude. It's, it's crazy. So, like, there are certain areas that are lineup areas that people just know, right? But then there's other oh, times right. where they just go, "Hey, go out into the street and just start taking pictures of people." And oh, okay. So, yeah. So you're you're kind of like, oh, okay, sure. So you're wandering around looking for somebody, and you see somebody, and you're like, "Hey, you want your picture taken?" And they're like, "Yeah, sure." You take your their picture. And you turn around and there's two other people standing there going, can you take our pictures too? And you're like, uh, okay. And so, sure. <laughs> I mean, why not? That's what I'm here for, right? And so then you take those two people's pictures and you turn back around and now there's like five or six people because apparently right. it's now a thing. Whatever it is you're doing. Everybody just feels the need. Wait, they're taking pictures. It must be something. Let's do it. <laughs> well, let's do it. It's, it. These are pictures. We have to have them. Pictures. Well, and, and part of that falls into the, the the way that they're doing it now in the park. If you have their app, um, if you pay 15 bucks, you get every single picture that's snapped of you. Right. So it's kind of like, and, and if you're a season pass holder and you've done it, then you get them for every single time you go. Uh, so it kind of becomes one of those things where it's just like, well, they're there, let's use them, you know. Yeah, that's right. They're part of my price that I'm paying, so I may as well get my values worth. Exactly. Uh. Get the values worth. So, but it's been, it's, it's, I did two days of kind of general training and then I did two weekends of camera training and it's been fun kind of jumping in there and, and doing it. So it's different, mm. that's for sure. I bet. Yeah, very different. Uh, so be, before we get started, I needed to give a shout out because he asked for it and he knows he's going to be going to sleep soon. Uh, so Andrew Driver in the UK, who is a Twitter follower, and uh, make sure you follow us on Twitter, and always likes our comments. So, yo, Andrew, what's up? I'm not going to even try and bust out an English accent because my wife says I'm terrible at all accents. Yes. I'll, I'll say, hello, Andrew. Because <laughs> I'm closer to English than you. <laughs> you've, got the, you've got some of the proper twang. It's just the different uh, uh, different slang, if you will. Yeah, that's right. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, uh, so what else, is, what else has been going on? What's going on in your neck of the woods, Jared? Uh, well, I started a new gig. I've got a new job. That's um, right. I, I was kind of like... I got an update on LinkedIn, and I was like, "Huh? What? I didn't yeah. know." You, okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I uh, I finished up at uh, at Credit Sense uh, about a week ago, and now I'm studying at a company called Squiz. Um. So cool name and pretty cool company as well. They uh, uh, they it, it's been a whirlwind week, and um, I'm enjoying it very much so far. I've got landed in a really good team that get the value of docs. And, uh, I was going to say it's more it's more technical writing, right? More tech writing, yeah. yeah. And they really they really understand the value that, of docs and what they bring, and that they're actually a, a part of the product, not an add on to the product. So it's good. Like I'm I'm in the right place um, as far as people who under who get what I do, which is awesome. Um, 
And uh, part of my farewell gift from um, Credit Sense was Lego Voltron. So I am which, which building I, my way through that. Which I too have, and it is a phenomenal Lego set, no doubt about it. It is. It's amazing. Yeah. It, and, it, and it weighs a small ton. <laughs> it really does. Yeah, I've, I'm only, I've got two more to build, and I've left the uh, one arm and the main line left to build. Which is, you know, a 291 step model, so, you know, yeah, just, non-trivial. Just, just a few, uh, a few steps. That's all. Yeah, just a few. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm really looking forward to getting that done, and I'll be able to join the beast together, then. But it's like the whole package is amazing. Like as you'll attest to, like it comes with full color booklets about Voltron, the history, and it comes with like, um, you know, a separate manual for each line, so you, you can actually make them up separately. Well, and, and, the, and the, any order you want. The other awesome part about it is it actually assembles like it does in the cartoon, like you know, combines. Mm. So that to me was it wasn't just oh hey yeah we built the model and it looks like the model, but when you break it apart, it doesn't break apart in the same way that it does in the show. No, there's actually the little the main lion's leg slips inside the legs of the or the the lions that form the legs the yeah. same way, and the arms attach the. I, no, it's. It's pretty it's awesome. It's amazing. Yes, yeah. the in, in true... Because uh, it, it was a Japanese cartoon series, wasn't it, Voltron? I think it was... Yes, well, well, Voltron has come in many, many different forms. There was one that was like... I think it was 40 different vehicles that formed Voltron. And then there was oh, wow. the, the Lions, which is the most famous. But it's also, if you look at it, it's pretty much what Power Rangers got their... Uh, idea from oh totally yeah <laughs> basically they're, they're human voltron yeah yeah so so yeah i love it uh, like the the legs on the model they are an an engineering feat um they they are just huge number one they're very large lines in scale to the arms but they've got this hinge mechanism for the foot which just blew my mind and yeah. how they engineered it it's so precise and so lovely well, well, hold on. So uh, here on the uh, the peanut gallery comments, uh, Jay Willen, who I know is in Scotland. Uh, if you don't know Voltron, that means you were not an '80s kid, and I'm sorry. Correct. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go Google that. That means you probably Go- also don't wa- don't know what Robotech is, which really makes me sad for you. So. Yeah. <laughs> Things, you, life goals you can catch up with. And actually, truth be told, if you have Netflix. They made a new Voltron cartoon that's on Netflix, and I th- believe that Robotech is also on Netflix. So, so there you go. You're watching your next weeks or months watching is all lined up. <laughs> Especially Robotech, dude. That's like 65 episodes or something like that. But what they used to yeah. do with, like, if you take Robotech specifically, it is a combination of three different, completely separate Japanese anime. But then it was Americanized and turned into one story. Right, I didn't know that. There yep. you go. Yep, it's the same, and it's the exact same thing that happened with um, Power Rangers. They took all the monsters and villains that were from the Japanese show, and because they were all in masks, they didn't have to worry about weird actors. Uh, yeah, languages or anything. Right, you know, the lips <laughs> don't have to match up. And then they yeah. cast Americans for when their masks are off. And then when they run out of footage of whatever that series was, then they just found another one of these five costumed people that transform into a robot. And it was still Power Rangers, but it was a completely different series in Japan as opposed to in America. They just kept it all the same. Merged all together. Merged. Yeah. <laughs> Merged. Yep. So... That's uh, there you go. So it's been a lot of fun building that little and, little history lesson, folks, and a bit of progress on the penny as well. I'm I'm got the uh, I'm very close to getting the cabinet done. I think I'm going to try a different approach with the side art because what I did is I've I've masked off all of the, the the spaceships on the side of the Force Two cabinet, and um, that's left me with the job of actually touching those up separately. And I think what I'm going to do is I might try using contact adhesive as the frisket film for this because it's such a large area um and i don't want the the uh the stencils to be perfect looking right you actually want a little bit of overspray 
a little bit of overspray and a little bit of sort of weirdness going on with the stencil. So I'm going to try masking off with contact, like, you know, book contact, the stuff you're putting, you cover your books with. Um, so that's going to be an interesting experiment. And it's going to be cheap because we've got lots of that stuff lying around the house with, with kids and school and stuff. So, yeah, it's going to be a good use of that. Speaking of this kind of rem- uh, <laughs> just talking about the anime and stuff, uh, mm. you saw the Twitter post by Mel asking, hey, what tables do you want uh, both Zen Original and uh, William's Pinball, correct? Yeah, I did. And you got a good response to your post. What was your request? <laughs> and so my request was, as always, uh, Roller Games, NBA Fast Break, and then uh, Adam's Family. Those are my... And yes, of course, Indiana Jones, but you know, obviously, but that's like a given. I think I think Zen Studios is probably aware that that's probably <laughs> one that they could do, you know, pretty safely. Yeah, I think that'd be everybody's kind of number one. But I definitely would like to see a proper Adams Family. Um, like I've always said, it's it's not necessarily my favorite pin, but it is such a go to of eh, I don't know what to play. Play Adams Family. I mean, that's yeah, just kind it's of it's always a good warm up. Yeah, it exactly. gives you a bit of taste of everything, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but then I was like, well, Zen Originals, my first request was let's get Super League back in to uh, mm. the square of things. And specifically, since they can't do any of the European teams that they had previously, my suggestion is that they do Twitch broadcasters or podcasters and Team yeah. Blockade gets in on yeah. the action. We won't Team even Blockade. We won't even charge... For our likenesses or anything, no, and and Team Dead Flip could go in as well. Dude, Team Dead you know? Flip, Buffalo Pinball, uh, yeah, I mean, there's any number of people that cover Zen. Um, That's so right. I, I Plenty think of choices. Be, I think it would be just kind of fun to to throw us a bone, if you will. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> it would be funny, eh? Yeah. yeah, and it would be the only way I'd ever be able to play football. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Yeah, with a flipper. Because <laughs> Lord knows my foot, my, my actual skills with a, a soccer ball uh, suck. Yeah. yeah, football. It's a different yeah. sport here. <laughs> yeah, it, I know. I've, I deliberately called it football because that, that is its correct name where it is in its country of origin. So there you go. It's a footy ball. Not to be confused yeah. with a foosball. Um, okay, foosball. so... <laughs> yeah. So anyway, so that was, my, that was my main request was that. But then in terms of... Hey Zen, you want to actually create something original? Um, my, I've gone over this other times in the podcast, but I would kill for a Monty Python's Holy Grail pinball machine. Just oh, really? so, just for the very fact that the multi ball would be a five ball, three sir, three multi ball. <laughs> because because he, he can never say. Yeah three he can only say five and so the, i leave it up to them to determine if it actually is five balls or if it's three balls but i think that would be hilarious um, fair enough I, I don't know if i could join you in my desire for a multi python table oh come on but... and then you could have a killer rabbit on the field that that you know lurches forward and, and you know that'd be the main toy and uh there's there's Look, all it'll... You know, you got the knights of me. That that instead of a hedge, you would have the uh, drop targets that you need to to knock down. I mean, I, there's so so many jokes and stuff that you could do with it. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think you have to be a fan of Monty Python to actually want it, though. <laughs> but you would I've become Monty a Python fan a after playing the table. That's no, what I've I'm watched saying. it a couple of times. I can't get it. It's yep. in, it's in My, that era of British humor that. I really, really struggle with to actually enjoy. So it would not be one of the tables that I would be foaming at the mouth to get. And that's where you'd be wrong. Um, there, so... would not, there would not, there would not be much rejoicing. <laughs> Yay! <if the> ta- <laughs> <laughs> but see, it's kind of like how. Uh, well, I was just going to say it's kind of like how No Good Gophers is essentially Caddyshack. Um, yeah. You don't necessarily have to be a fan of Caddyshack, but Obviously, it helps you get more of the humor. And Medieval Madness has a ton of stuff that's basically ripped straight from uh, Holy Grail. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, my other two table suggestions, though, uh, number one is Cowboy Bebop. But mm. you've got to use the music because that's just critical and essential. And I would reject it totally if they didn't use 
at least one piece of music from the anime. And then the other is uh, Ghost in the Shell, which could, in all intents and purposes, become kind of like a Bride of Pinbot, uh, if you, the way you design it. So, mm. yeah, It could be very interesting. And then Mel commented back, those are really nice choice or doable choices. I was like, don't tease yeah. me. <laughs> nice choices and, and realistic. realistic. Yeah, realistic. Quite, I believe. Yeah, but there it's like, go. come on, don't don't even dangle that in front of me and make me foam with a mouth for it. So, <laughs> uh, um, since we're on the topic of Zen, uh, hang in there, folks. A release date is imminent. It's it's coming. <laughs> there's there's news coming. I, I'm just gonna say even that even Mel's much. talking about it on Twitter now. So you know if Mel's talking about it on Twitter, yeah. like it's coming up. It's really close. Yeah, you know. So just. Hang hang tight a little bit longer. You're almost there. Um, yeah. And uh, that kind of brought in... I Do you go over to the... the I don't know if you have or not. Uh, over to the Pinball FX Discord channel. No, I don't. So, over on the Discord channel, uh, Akos started it, and Geno is also now running it, uh, or commenting on it. A uh, little more chance of interaction with them there than if you were trying to do it via Digital Pinball Fans website. Mm. Okay, that's good to know. And, uh, like, if they have news, they'll actually post it there themselves. Zen will. So, uh, it, it's a good idea if you're on Discord or download Discord and uh, look up the Pinball FX 3. I think it might just be Pinball FX uh, Discord page. And anyway, there was a one of these discussions that, you know, again, people are groaning and moaning that it's been five months. And as people groan and moan, then it becomes the question of, well, why can't they just do it monthly? I would rather have one table per month than wait for table packs. And, Jared, do we need to really remind people why that is? Oh, well, we can just say licensing and we can just say um, no. <laughs> <laughs> Let me put it to you this way, folks. Is it cheaper to buy a six-pack of toilet paper or to buy a jumbo bundle at Costco that's going to Costco. last you way longer? Exactly. It's yep. less expensive for them to package a whole bunch of them than to package little tiny packs. Yeah. And the same applies to pinball. It's less expensive for them to work on, say, three tables at the same time because one table might be super easy, one table might be super complicated, you never want to bottleneck everything. So if that one table is really complicated, people that are waiting around for something to come down the process can jump on one of the other two and be working on that stuff, and it, it just frees up. It makes the process flow better. Right. <laughs> um, I mean, that's, that's kind of reason number one for it. Reason number two is purely the economical thing. Look... How many people would have actually bought Safecracker if it had to come out as a single table? Probably no one. Yeah. Really? Yeah. They would have gone, eh, no, I can pass. Yeah. And instead, it makes more sense because of how much Zen paid for the entire license to bundle it with some other ones. Yes, it's forcing you into having to purchase it, but I got news for you. The bundle price is cheaper per table than what a single table price per would have been. So in essence, you're getting the damn thing for free anyway. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So just look at it that way and just continue to ignore Safecracker in your collection. Yeah, hold on. I'm reading over here. This is uh, uh, Jay is coming. There's a Williams Season 1 pack now that, same as the other season packs, is 20% less than buying what it is individually. What so is I, it I, individually? 20% less, I, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, like I said, it's not hard to do the math and figure out uh, why it makes sense on that for, on that front. Uh, the yeah. other big thing, and Farsight learned this the hard way, uh, yeah, each time you submit to console, coinage! <laughs> um, yep, so that's every why, single time. And they've got a lot of consoles they're supporting. Yeah, and that's why Farsight eventually just went to two times a year releasing, because mm -hmm. it's expensive. So, yeah. yeah, cut them, cut them some slack. You'll get your tables, damn it. Um, did you get? I didn't. I haven't gotten anything. I've been checking my email. Apparently, they sent out a newsletter. Zen did. Yeah, I didn't get any newsletter. 
If I anybody, feel left out. If, if anybody got the newsletter, uh, why don't you forward it over to blah blah blockade at gmail.com so we can actually see it? Because <laughs> yeah. we like we, we both of us have subscribed to the Zen fan club, etc. So. You know, we we should be receiving these, I would think. I would think, unless it's just because we get the the behind-the-scenes info and they're like, they don't need this stuff. (laughs) Well, maybe, yeah. But still... still like to see it. Yeah, I'd still like to see it. it. I'd like to know, because it was one of those things people started mentioning, oh, well, they said in the news... I'm like, what? What? I I don't... (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Left me fumbling. Yeah. News to us. Um, So, yeah, once, once the announcement is made... Then believe me, we'll talk about it here. And oh uh, yeah, and once we're allowed to show things, we'll show things also. Yes, just probably like all the other Twitch people that have also signed NDAs, but that's okay. <laughs> well, you know, they 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 do tell us when we're actually able to broadcast. So yes, and I want to be first. Uh, although Deadflip probably yes. will get the the honors. I think he usually does. Yeah, he, he will. Yeah. And so he should, because he's very good at what he does. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> uh, I'll give him that, absolutely. Yeah, no, and he actually knows how to play pinball pretty damn well. Yeah, he does. <laughs> um, can we type that email address, and Jay Willen will forward it to, to us. Uh, Jared, maybe you can sure. take care of that. Yeah. Um, in the meantime, we're going to move on to other stuff, which is actual... Oh my god, something happened that we can talk about. Uh, so Zachariah Pinball, they have released their uh, final remake table, which is uh, Star God. And I had not played the Time Machine remake that just came out, what, last month, I think? So we're I'm going to actually play that for you guys, both of them, so you can get a uh, feel for it and... Uh, see what these are because truth be told and Jared you haven't seen it either of these have you no I haven't no I like them I like both of them <laughs> the, mm. there's now these are not these are not the deluxe versions that they're no so suggesting. this is yeah so th- this isn't the last tables that Zacharia pinball is releasing but you could call it the last Zacharia tables because what I believe they're moving on to after this which they're calling deluxe tables, are the uh, those bonus tables that they had made that uh, you unlock by doing achievements. I think. All right. I think they're remaking those. Oh, okay. I think. Well, that's interesting. I don't know for sure. They're remaking well, something that they've done in the past. That's what I'm under the impression of. Okay. So it's the last official Zacharia tables, but it's not the last that Zacharia Pinball is, because Zachary Pinball via Magic Pixel is making. Confusing, That's no? right. <laughs> it is it, it is a little, yeah, but, you know, we'll probably work through it. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure it out. All right, mm. so uh, that being said, why don't we just go ahead and jump in and show people. Sorry, all of you listening to the audio version. We'll pr- try and be descriptive, but... This yeah, is I'll why be... you should hop on board and uh, get onto Twitch. <clears throat> uh, so <clears throat> let me uh, just kick things over here and uh, get this thing actually uh, cooking. Hold on, where'd it go? Did I? Oh, I got to push play. It, it canceled out on me. Oh, uh, well. Yeah. So for now, you just get our floating heads. Oh my god, that's loud. Is it loud to you? It sounds loud to me. Oh, let me just uh, oh. unmute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what is going on. The I don't know. Let's let's hey, hey help us out, people that are uh, watching. Is that like amazingly loud uh, compared to my voice? I think you're shouting. I feel like I'm shouting. Because yeah. I think um, <laughs> cause, cause it, the way it works folks, is that Chris has got two mics: one for Twitch and one for the Skype call that we're on. And the one that the Skype call they're on, we basically got a whole lot of clipping right there. There we, go, there we go. I got the I got the word that it's quite loud. So let me uh, get my mouse over there and adjust that. No, oh, no. I see. Hold on. Hold on. I'm figuring it out. There's another. All right. So there's probably eight different levels that you have to tweak. <laughs>
Good lord. I'm trying to find out where the... Uh... Nope, not there. There's an, there's an audio level somewhere. Okay, this is the funny part. I have absolutely no... Uh, indicator for this stuff. Jared has gone quieter than he was. Okay, hold on. I think I know because... Yes. I'm having a hard time. I, nothing I do is adjusting the volume. This is rather annoying because I have no audio control over what that is. Hold on, let me try one other thing. Okay, how about that? Did that help anything, folks? No, uh, it's still the same. Volume. Still the same? Okay, all I did was lower the volume in my headphones. <laughs> all right, well, you know what, folks? I'm just going to have to yell. Um, that's the way it's going to work. Sorry. All right, let's start with Time Machine, which... Uh, I will tell you right now has some really, really rad music in it. So long as we're playing the future. Yeah. Power engaged. Well, see, now that we don't have that really loud... Uh, Traveling to the future. Intro music. This is actually okay. Yeah, that's not bad, right? This, this future music is just... I dig it. Oh. Ball floating around. Not Maybe anymore. Play field. Oh, you got it. And it's hard to knock that ball out of place, I will say. Like, see? I just knocked it and it stayed in place. Because now there's that other one floating. It keeps coming. There's more balls. Yes, there's another ball. You can have a maximum of three multi balls. But see how it's just bouncing off of it? It's not like. Uh, uh, Bram Stoker's Dracula, where it just all you have to do is subtly bump it. You gotta wail on this thing in order to get it off the magnet. Really good. I can see how the, the ball, those people who are not watching it, the, the ball has these sort of indicated positions on the playfield. Yes. It moves between all these indicated positions. So. And then when you die, the ball just drains along with the others. And it's like a, it's a constant multi-ball in this game. Constantly available as multi-ball. Let's see if I can give a good whack on it and show you how it... See? Look at that, it just stayed in place. <laughs> yeah, strong magnets on this game. There we go. In case you're all wondering, Jared's watching it's a slightly like delayed feed from my audio. Yeah, it's almost like it's a black water black or black water 300. A instant multi ball would start the game sort of thing. So, that being said, I have no clue what to do in this table. I've been playing it for a couple of days, and it, it really has boggled my brain. I don't know what I'm supposed to do to start a mode. Um, there are... It's like you got to shoot the flashing things. Or are they just combo indicators? Yeah, they're combo indicators. And I think a lot of it has to do with the, uh... The drop targets on the left and the stand-up targets on the right. I think. So let's see if I can... Yeah. See if I can try and do that. Okay, so story mode lit on the upper right. Sounds like one of the guys in the studio. So you see that on the upper right, um, th there's a flashing purple light that says story mode. Yeah, so I gotta a flashing thing underneath this. Yeah, so I gotta try and lock the yeah, ball. Underneath the stone man. Lock the ball there. Which is not easy. There we go. It's just really nice to see the ball going a little bit yellow towards the bottom of the play field there as well. So now I just gotta hit three Dura targets. And they reset after you uh, hit any one of them. So it's just basically hit it three times. 
So if you're at all familiar with uh, Zen's challenge modes, that's basically what you're doing for the mode here. Ah, oh, and I blew it. Oh, they Christ. Whoops. Whoops. Um, when I start the next, I'll start this game again. And so right now we're doing the future. And I'll play it the past, which has a whole different music. Which isn't nearly as cool as the music that's playing right now. Right. So how do you go to the past? That's the question I don't know. <laughs> I think when you first start the game, it's a question of which flipper button you hit first. I think if you hit right, you go future. If you hit left, you go past. But I don't know in game how to switch between past and future. Be pretty cool. Could actually switch between future and past. That'd be pretty cool. So pretty good uh, audio cues or effects that they're doing. Yeah. Uh, it seems pretty good. I think the problem with, with these tables you've never seen before is that you, you really need to understand the rules. Walking into it. So it's almost like you need to read the rule sheet, right? Right. All right, let me see if I can start the, the past. The time travel. Uh, let me see what the DMD sells me. Select time by left or right flipper. All right, so if I do left. Traveling to the past. Yeah, there we go. Alright, so now you'll hear different music. Oh, it's a bit like um, Time Shock, really, isn't it? With the whole past and mm -hmm. the future. So now instead of spaceshipy sounds, you get dinosaur kind of sounds. So that's what I said. They did a pretty good audio package. It is pretty good, yeah. And the shots are actually fun. Um, the ramps are really hard to hit because there's not a lot of power coming off the flippers. Extinct. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But that's kind of the appeal. Oh, I hate that. So the ball got blocked by the the magnet ball. Um, and now you see the mode start is dead center of the table. Oh, yes. There's like a little hole up there. Yeah. How are you supposed to get into there? It's pretty tricky. It, it reminds me a lot of uh, the Houdini table with the very, very narrow uh, mode yeah. select uh, shot. You can't do it from the... Yeah, you're right. You can't do it from the left flipper. You can only do it from the right, I believe. See if I can get it. Nope. Ah. Jeez, you really, you really do have to wall up that ball, don't you? Like, you hit a direct hit on it. Yeah. It's like the magnet is directly touching the ball rather than going through the playfield like it is on Dracula. Yeah, and I wasn't sure if it was one of those things where it's like, oh, you gotta hit it three times, or... No, you just have to wall up it. No, you just gotta give it a good wall. So interestingly, though, that it's kind of fun because it acts as a uh, kind of a spoiler on the on the playfield, you know, something to bounce off against that's moving. So yeah, it's like, like a constantly moving block attack. Yeah, it, it kind of reminds me of uh, the old stock car racing games where there was one car that you could just put on that didn't require a kid to play with it, and it would just go back and forth and block your car. <laughs> I don't know, I'm probably dating myself there with that, but oh, oh, yeah. there we go, locked it. Oh, you got it in there. You got it in there. So now I have to hit the spot target center. Okay, I got a ball save though. And bye bye. Yeah, here's where you, you really, you really need uh, the multi ball. Oh, jeez. 
It's a drain monster, folks. I'll tell you that much. <laughs> All right. So All right, that's the, time machine. Uh, the other one. So that's time machine, and now we will play Star God. Star God. Which, to me, looks like an Ed Hardy T-shirt. You'll know what I mean in a second. I'll just let the playfield go, so you can see. <laughs> oh wow, that's a vibrant playfield. Yes, isn't it though? I'm gonna wait for flyby mode to kind of. Planet Tendor is under attack by an unexpected meteor shower. There is only one way to stop this. And you're not gonna tell us how. The planet Tendor is under attack <laughs> by an unexpected meteor shower. All right, fine. Let, let there me is play. There's only one way to stop. For those who are worthy shall possess the sword of Adam. Back. Now, unfortunately, the music on this one is kind of the standard. Oh, jeez, look at that. Um, it's kind of the standard Zachariah sound, which I'm not really a fan of. Um, but it's not terrible. Yeah, I don't what? understand. This thing that I don't understand. Whenever you hit a stand-up target, yeah, it makes a drop target noise. I <laughs> notice that. I don't know why that is. But it always seems to be the case. Wow, there's some weird flipper action. There. Right? Up in the top playfield. That's like a. a it's, it's pretty much. Uh, Feels Black like Knight, Black Knight, really. yeah. Or um, the top level. Or, or you know, the top level of. Um, uh, Haunted House. No, it doesn't feel as annoying as Haunted House. <laughs> well, yeah, it's true. So this one's interesting in that in order to start the mode, you first have to spin the flipper 30 times. I mean, not the flipper, uh, the spinner 30 times. Um, which took me a long time to figure that out. But I love all these clashing sword sounds and everything on this one. Kid. <laughs> Come the guards. <laughs> I do not concur. <laughs> yeah, when you get a lot of that, I do not concur. And then it, I got confused because at one at one point he tells you that Arthur is looking for the sword, and I'm like, wait a second, what? This is King Arthur? <laughs> so I don't know what what's going on there. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so. Let me see if I can get the uh, spinner going, and then we can start a mode. Oh, I'd say it's stub mode, isn't it? Ooh, that return from the spinner is a bit nasty. Dude, it's all a bit nasty. Kickback. <laughs> I mean, these two tables are really outlaying drain monsters. There's no doubt about it. Look at that. I didn't even... Be careful. Oh, oh. Without any interaction. No, none. Always <laughs> drain. Oh, so 20 rotates left. Yes, I see what you mean, Joe Willing. But you got to be paying attention to the DMD, mate. That's a problem. Yeah. <laughs> You're just trying to keep the ball alive. I yeah, <laughs> just, and I didn't. Um, it is one area... Here, let me do one more game of this. It is one area that I wish uh, Magic those, Pixel was better at. Their DMDs are very boring. Uh, it's just purely text. They don't have any animations other than occasionally that. <laughs> so you get some you get some fireworks. That's about the extent of your animations, but... Uh, well, you know, Gary, Gary soon always says, oh, the action's always on the playfield, it's on the back glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Although but to the people the watching... I think even he's um, you know, going against his grain there with all the work they've been doing on the video screens of the new... Um, students. Like, there's a lot of stuff happening in terms of now that it was. It right. wasn't in the early stages of those being introduced. Okay, so I got all my spinners. So now I think it's any hole that I can put the ball into will start the mode. So let's see if that's true. There's one up in the middle. Cave, like that. Okay. There we go. Our first mission is to oh. go to the cave. Right, there it is. Okay. But see how boring that is? Cave of Hayden. There's nothing, no animations. Not even oh, cool font. For 20 uh, it's it's almost like uh, um like the introduction of DMD is in the nineties. <laughs> you know, there's like very little animation going. <clears throat> so this is just keep the ball alive for 
and and rolling. That's all you have to do. 13 meters left. You gotta keep rolling that ball. And too bad. It is not over yet. And get wrecked. Yeah. It's not over yet. It's not over here. yet. Unfortunately, I have to now rotate the spinner all those times again to get it going. Be careful. And <laughs> Currently number 20, Chris. Yeah, that will oh, not sorry. not this go around. That's my best of. They they always show what your best score was at the bottom corner. <clears throat> I don't know what uh, how many spins I got left. Be oh. Careful. You know, you fix that? Wait. Spin the spinner. <laughs> <laughs> I, wait, I think it said that I had yes. locking Holes ability. Hole. Any hole is your goal. Any <laughs> and that's a Friday night. Um, <laughs> Cave of hate. So isn't that weird? There's a hole behind the drop targets. Only there can we find the sword of Adam. Yeah, that you don't even know is there. <laughs> Roll the ball for 20 meters. Oh, and it comes out the top hole. That's uh, uh, somewhat inconceivable in real game physics. Yeah, there's a, there's a hell of a subway system going on on this table. Yeah, there is. <clears throat> so the safe move is to basically roll it up the middle and stay away from the edges because that's how you drain no because if i'm oh my god if i'm playing theater of magic i stick to the orbits i don't go to the middle middle is death on theater of magic whereas this one the orbits are death Lion man. Lion <laughs> man. <laughs> so it's so it's a cross of Swords of Fury and uh, and Black Knight. Uh, uh. <laughs> it is not ah. over yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that was a horrible game. All right, uh, I'm gonna exit out of this, and I'm gonna just show real quick main menu. So if we go to Award? Yes. Okay, so these are the tables that I believe possibly are going to get remade as the deluxe tables. I'm, that's my guess. Because these haven't been touched in a long time. I mean, they're basically what was put out on mobile, but they haven't been redone at all. So that's what my guess is, that uh, these are going to get tweaked. I haven't got to these yet. Great. So, quitting the game, going back to this so that people can hear us properly once again. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> anyway, I do want to say, though, I, I'm I'm not the biggest Zachariah fan at all. Um, I'm mm -hmm. usually very, very quite critical of their tables, and I don't get a whole lot of amusement out of them. These two tables, I'm getting a lot of amusement out of. So, um, that's high praise for me. Let's put it to you that way. I think they yeah, really sure. did a good job on these two. Yeah, they've done a good job. They do look interesting out of all their remakes that they've done. They, There's a lot going on. Yeah, no, I mean, you can clearly see they've learned a thing or two from when they started doing the remakes. Yeah, definitely. Um, so, yeah, go check out uh, Hop On It. Download a little, uh, little Zach Pinball, if you will, and... Uh, Enjoy get on the new, support get on the new them. Ones. Yeah, yeah, because and and you know every time you do um, make mention of Zachary, you gotta say get the uh, Gottlieb license. Um, so yeah, totally. <laughs> they do a great job of that Gottlieb license. They've got that in their DNA. Oh, it would be so um, amazing, really. and it's not like Farsight's doing anything. No, are you no. guys? Because I think we can safely put to bed the rumors that Farsight would be doing something with Elvira. 
Yeah, because mm, we no. haven't heard a peep from them. <laughs> yeah, no. Yeah, I have no idea what they're doing. It's like whatever, <laughs> whatever table they were working on that had female hair on it. I don't think it was Elvira. <laughs> no, pretty sure it wasn't. Yeah. Although, um, you never know. They might go, oh, and surprise, here it comes. The Stone Pinball Arcade, and we completely redone Stone Pinball Arcade to make it not suck. <laughs> Dream on. <laughs> <You know. laughs> Who knows? Who knows? It could be very surprised. Um, hey, did you happen to see the Star Wars redo that Stern is yeah. doing? Yeah. It w- makes the table look better. Yeah, it doesn't improve. It doesn't improve the table. It just makes, it, makes it, look it look better. Look better. Yes, because yes. for those that uh, aren't aware, uh, Stern is reissuing Star Wars, but now with comic book art, and yeah. it's what they should have done all along. Absolutely not the not the Photoshop dodge job that they did on the first table. Well, like hand drawn art for that, the win, folks. Hand drawn art. It's the winner. It's what people want now in pinball. It's what they did back in, you know, the eighties and early nineties. And there wasn't a lot of photoshopping. It's only in the two thousands when that became really expensive and pinball was dying that they went, Oh, you know, photoshopping's fine. Well, yeah, you can pretty much blame uh, Sega Pinball for the yeah. truly, truly horrible Photoshop jobs. Yes. They they were really slapped on there. Um <laughs> uh, but yeah, this this art package they've got on the on the new tables looks really nice. Like even down to the point where the font and everything is Comic Sans. No, it's not Comic the... Sans, according to somebody on Twitter. No oh, dear. <laughs> they they identified it as not Comic Sans. I forget what they uh, identified it as. So no, we don't get to make fun of them for doing that. But <laughs> well, see, I I think I wouldn't have made fun because the Comic Sans that is an appropriate place to use Comic Sans in a comic. And that's the only appropriate <laughs> place to use Comic Sans for the record. If you're a technical writer, not, not on a comic... uh, not on an essay, not on a term paper. What? No, no, that's the exact. No, definitely not, and definitely not in product documentation. <laughs> <laughs> Although one 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 April Fools, I would love to just switch the front package out on an entire doc site and just use Comic Sans, <laughs> and just make people go what? I still laugh that. <laughs> Uh, Avatar had to change their font for these newer movies when they come out because they used the font Papyrus and Papyrus was not popular at all back then Uh, but it senses ubiquitous across everywhere and so they're like yeah we need to create our own font that's us (laughs) (laughs) because Papyrus was like the font du jour of all these websites every single website was using Papyrus it was not a unique identifier at all dude I've used Papyrus many a time myself so you know (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But yeah, I love the package. I love the fact that, yeah, and of what I was getting to with the, the use of Comic Sans is that even on the little in-game monitor, the little LCD, they've even got like the Comic Sans text below it um, that was originally there, but just in like block text in Comic Sans now. It's just really nicely integrated the way they've done it. And it's good to see another artist that is... It's it's that's not Zombie Yeti. I was just gonna say doing, not Zombie Yeti. Um, yeah, because you know, although he does just a phenomenal job on art, it's great to actually see another artist getting a go to do this style of not Photoshop art. Because Zombie Yeti really led the pack for a long time with that. But well, and then it would could, be nice if they could, you know, if they can get in there with this, that maybe Jersey Jack will follow suit and go this way. I mean, they obviously had to do Dialed In that way, but even Dialed In basically looks like Sim City. It, it does, yeah. But, I mean, that's maybe the look they were absolutely going for. Like, you know? Right. Right. But it's not, it's certainly not Funhouse. <laughs> no, yeah. it's definitely not, no. Don't. So, yeah, look, I, I dig it. I like the art package. I know that no one's going, no one's going to buy one of these that already has a Star Wars. Although, no, probably not, actually. People will probably sell their Star Wars and then buy this one new because they're nuts. Uh, <laughs> I've, and I've already seen those people post. Where they're like, yeah, the hey, do you want yeah. my Star Wars home use only, uh, totally tricked out? I'll sell it so that I can get this instead. Yeah, yeah. And look, it, it, I don't blame. If you're a real fan of Star Wars, this is a complete... I've never seen a package like this before produced for Star Wars. It's always been direct movie shots and no animated, no, like no cartoon style on it. So it is really a first. For, well, for... if you went back to the Data East table oh for... yeah that's technically a bit sort of yeah, yeah you could say that was sort of hand it was definitely hand drawn that's for sure yes it was definitely hand drawn yes. 
but not in this real comic style like this this sort of very different art package but i like it either way i think it's it, it looks good it won't make the game any better um for me no, no. i know everyone loves nothing it is going to do that it's got that <laughs> that that action button thing that locks the multipliers which i really couldn't give two stuffs about but look it's going to look a lot nicer when you play when you're stepping up to it and have to play it in tournament every single week <laughs> i'm talking to you brisbane pinball club <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, that's that's how you're familiar with it huh oh yes yes i've grown to hate it and uh, the thing that with with Leatherworld, the thing they do with their pinballs, they put super bands on everything, so it's just the ball is just wacky. Like it comes off flippers with super bands on, it either goes completely different direction because it like basically it's like a super grippy tire, or it just falls dead and doesn't do anything. It's it makes it so variable hmm, to play. Okay. Yeah, I don't like. There's some people who have stopped going to the 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 tournament because of super bands on all the machines there. So what you're saying is I shouldn't buy super bands for my eight ball deluxe. Maybe you could use super bands for slingshots and things that get a little weird, but just go with original flipper rubbers just for the flippers. And I'm I'm probably probably going to do the same with the three I'm restoring. I will probably do white super band style um, rubbers simply because they they wear a lot longer. Like they don't they don't powder and they don't go dodgy, so you'll get a lot more wear out of them. But on the rubbers, on the flippers, where that's your contact with the ball, I just want that original feel. Like, I, I'm happy to buy original rubbers for that area of the play field. Yeah. I hear you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, do we have anything else that is pinball-related, Jared? Uh, I don't think so. Uh, one thing I will say, uh, as a side note to my um, renovations at home for the, the pinball machines, I'm... I'm having a hard time working out how to juggle the machines around in the area that I have. Um, and it's, I'm working out ways of trying to like put things on dollies and have them movable. And it's very much like one of those sliding tile puzzles. You have to sort of work out what bits you're going to do first and then have a, a plan lined up about what other bits you're going to do. So you have room to store everything while you're doing it. It's, um, it's 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 uh taking some of the shine away from doing it but it's still okay do you have uh the other two tables up on legs no they're all well the other, i've only got one other table in the garage because it's literally i only have room for one other table um so i've got two tables on premises um and they're on their backs at the moment okay so, yeah so that does make yeah. it i was because what i was going to say um i just went to our cheapo hardware store called Harbor Freight and bought little um, caster wheels that are yes. you know, three caster wheels. And, you know, they've got just a little tiny pot in them. I bought four of those. I put them under the legs of my machine and then I can roll it around wherever I need to and pop it back off because I can't afford yeah. nor do I need a pinball dolly. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I've got these little um, things that are like a they're a metal sort of a assembly thing, and they've got three little caster wheels on them. But the reason why I chose these over a little wooden wooden platform is that they've got a little notch in them, so you can put a bolt through them, and um, that should actually stop the little rolly things from rolling around too much. But yeah, I've done, I'm going to do exactly the same thing. It's going to be a lot easier to work on it if it's on wheels. You can just slide it back in tuck it out of the way and it's going to be a lot easier yeah okay mm. so um next week we will plan on podcasting again uh next saturday uh mm. hopefully i don't know i i honestly can't tell you when we'll be able to actually talk about anything because we haven't gotten the uh, the heads up um However, if for some reason, which would be probably my fault again, we don't podcast, uh, we'll do everything on our power to uh, stay up to date so that if anything drops midweek or whatever, that uh, we'll try and pop on and do Even something. do a quick one. Even you do, do a, quick a quick one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah. So we'll, we'll try and keep you in the loop uh, unless it like is obvious that it exploded everywhere and there's no need for us to keep you in the loop, in which case we'll just save it for us crowing about how awesome things are yeah yeah that's gonna be it when really. we can actually clarify <laughs> exactly do. what the awesome is 
Because it's, it's awesome. Yes. It is. It's full of awesome and much win. <laughs> okay. So this is the part of the show where we say, hey, why don't you follow us on Twitter? It's, oh, right there. And uh, yeah. that the blockade. And while you're at it, then you can go ahead and uh, follow. Watch this, folks. Watch watch closely. Here it goes. I think I'm going to hit the right button. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And oh, oh, there was that. Look at that. And then watch. I go over to Jared and I go, oh, there's his. See, look at that. Those are our Twitter handles. Follow us. Enjoy. I'm right this way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. You got you to gotta move your head backwards from what you're thinking, Jared. Yeah. Very yeah. um, <laughs> image. And uh, be sure you go over to the uh, website, which is blockadepinball.com slash, or, yeah, slash episodes. Um, yeah. There's where you can download all the past previous episodes. But those of you watching, you should have over to YouTube and follow our YouTube channel, Blockade Pinball. And that's where you'll also find a myriad of videos, tons of videos, uh, to be able to watch past episodes just because sometimes it's fun to mock and laugh. That's right. <laughs> it's always fun to mock and laugh. Yes. yes. All right. We love it, so do it. Well, until then, I just want to say thanks for putting up with us and our uh, dodgy schedule. Uh, thank you for everybody that, uh, <laughs> obviously, my weekly, uh, you know, weekday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, playing has severely dropped off, and that's again thanks to <clears throat> the mouse. Um, yeah, not so. a bad thing though. You know, work is important. I, I'd much rather you be gamefully employed than you know sitting at home playing video games, Chris. Well, especially <laughs> since the the video games, uh, nobody ever bothered tipping me, and I thought that that would eventually yeah, happen. That's and, not going to uh, earn the money. No, uh, no. You, I guess you kind of have to have you know thousands of people watching you. Yeah. Instead of just yeah, and three. Three, yeah. <laughs> unless, and look, unless they're very generous, those three watches, you're not going to have success. Hey, I more. was happy just to have actually people sitting there viewing and commenting. That that helps. And it's mm. what keeps me, you know, when I have the chance, when I can do it, I will certainly jump on and, and do it some more. Um, I've also been competing with my son needing a computer to do homework. Oh, yeah, homework, yeah. you got to yeah. do that. Yeah, you know. Unfortunately. Yeah, he, he, he that. reached that age where everything is on the computer now, and uh, we only have the one. <laughs> so you, you've got to do it. Got to yeah. sacrifice. Give him the access. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Uh, okay. So that being said, y'all know the schedule. Y'all know what's happening, and uh, we'll do it again. Thank you so much. Jared, until then, what's happening next week? There will be definitely some stuff and probably some things. I like it. All right, folks. Bye-bye. See ya. <laughs>